Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we're talking about business magnet, investor, and engineer Elon Musk, who's been making quite the splash on Twitter this week. Musk has been making waves by starkly criticizing the mainstream media, as he should be. News outlets, journalists, and cable news anchors are pretty much the worst of the worst at this point, known for lying and manipulating their audiences, more than they're known for actually delivering useful information to the public. That and, of course, the news is violently left-wing, biased, globalist, and anti-America and anti-Trump or God Emperor, but that's a whole other discussion. I think Elon's qualms with the media are more bipartisan. Anyone could get behind his complaints. Something we can all agree on is the news has become fucking dumb and mostly tabloid garbage, sensational journalism that just needs to stop. They all do it for the clicks at this point, which reminds me of another issue I heard Musk bring up on Twitter about the media a while back. Recently, you may have heard about a few of the accidents in the autopilot driving projects at the Tesla company, the electric car making company which Elon Musk owns. And well, Musk was rightly pissed because the media would only report on these few and far between accidents and injuries, instead of covering things fairly and appropriately and giving due credit to their successes as well. And now, well, I think that's part of what led to Elon's recent barrage of attacks against the news lately. Attacks which I think the media deserves. I mean, come on, they had this coming, but they're sure not happy about it. In fact, I got a nice little butthurt opinion piece I found from the failing New York Times about just this. It's titled Elon Musk, the Donald of Silicon Valley. It's by an author author named Brett Stevens who goes on to characterize Musk as a tech tycoon version of Trump. As if that's a bad thing. It's not actually bad at all if you ask me. It's pretty damn awesome. And we're going to go over why right now. The article begins with, he is prone to unhinged Twitter eruptions. He can't handle criticism. He scolds the news media for its purported dishonesty and threatens to create a Soviet-like apparatus to keep tabs on it. He suckers people to fork over cash in exchange for promises he hasn't kept. He's a billionaire whose business flirts with bankruptcy. He's sold himself as an establishment crushing economy when he's really little more than an unusually accomplished BS artist. My name gets a mention in there, nice. His legions of devotees are fanatics and, let's face it, a bit stupid. I speak of Tesla chief executive Elon Musk, the Donald Trump of Silicon Valley. Wow, this guy sounds pretty damn butthurt, huh? I have to say though, this is an apt comparison. I just see it as a positive one, not negative at all. Musk is like Trump in that both guys have faced the lies and manipulations of the lamestream media, and instead of bending over and taking it, our guys decided to clap back back and call the news out for being disingenuous assholes. I mean, can this New York Times writer really pretend the lies of the media is only purported dishonesty anymore? I thought everyone was aware the news is full of lies now. If this guy still thinks we're buying this the media is honest crap, then he needs to get a fucking clue. In fact, I did a video just last week about how the New York Times itself was caught lying and changing article titles in order to protect former President Barack Hussein Obama. And now this Brett guy has the balls to pretend him and the rest of the media are honest? Get the fuck out of here here, dude. And about this Soviet-like apparatus Brett tries to pin on Musk. Well, that's just more nonsense. What he's referring to is a suggestion Musk made in a tweet that read, going to create a site where the public can rate the core truth of an article and track the credibility score over time of each journalist, editor, and publication. Thinking of calling it Pravda. Sounds like a pretty good idea to me, actually. So, I don't know where the fuck Brett is getting Soviet-like from. Maybe because Musk suggested the name Pravda, which is Russian for truth, I believe. But so what? That doesn't make him a fucking con communist, socialist, Russian villain from James Bond. Although I could see Musk playing that kind of part in a movie one day, if his Teslas and spaceship companies don't work out. But really, the implication that Musk is suggesting something Soviet-like here is fucking ridiculous. Brett might as well have called Musk a Nazi, anti-trans, racist, xenophobe. Might as well hit the full SJW gambit while we're here. But really, this prompt idea of having a rating system for journalists sounds pretty legit. It's almost like what the Snopes website used to do before it got taken over by shills. It also reminds me of one of those websites students at colleges use to check out their potential professors. Past students can rate their teachers online and future students can see if that class and teacher works for them. The same sort of system potentially could be implemented on journalists. Ratings could be based on their accuracy and the validity of the facts in their stories and how well their reporting is received. Some sort of checks and balances on them would be nice. Just think of it like a Yelp, but instead of rating restaurants, you're rating reporters and their news outlets. Next, you gotta ask why reporters wouldn't want this. Well, it's pretty obvious they want to continue their unrestrained ways. They don't want any accountability because then the whole world will be able to easily see how full of shit they are all the time. Having a Yelp-like app for reporters like the Pravda idea will make it too easy to click on the website and see who's full of shit right away with a click of the button. And reporters don't want that. They are happy with the way things are now because they have almost complete control and it's too hard to sift through their shit currently. But we the people, we don't want it that way anymore. Not at all. The rest of Brett's stunningly unself-aware introduction goes on to slam 
slam Musk slash Trump for flirting with bankruptcy and for being BS artists and having stupid fans. The last of which is just simply untrue and is a sad and pathetic attempt at shaming these highly successful men and the people who follow them. I call this alpha shaming. Happens to me all the time. Beta male cucks like Brett and the New York Times can't stand strong, confident, irreverent men like me and Musk and Trump, so they try and slam us any way they can. And quite frankly, this bit is getting more and more desperate by the minute. Like the part about bankruptcy again. This is just more disingenuous reporting like the Soviet line. I'm sure Brett knows that big, high-profile businesses and businessmen often work with bankruptcies. It's just a common way to write off losses and save on fees and taxes or whatever they're going for. But Brett's banking on, pun intended, Brett's banking on the common misconception that anyone who's ever had to deal with bankruptcy ever is a terrible person with poor business skills. And this is simply not true. But that's not stopping Brett from putting that idea out there, which is also rather ironic since his company, the New York Times, they aren't exactly doing that well themselves. In fact, the New York Times has been going bankrupt itself for years. They've been bleeding money over there, while Musk and Trump continue to make billions. So needless to say, the hypocrisy of the suggestion is pretty fucking ridiculous, even by New York Times standards. Next, let's turn back to Twitter and see some of the reactions to Musk's initial tweets. There was one in particular that really sparked a lot of replies. Elon said this, Who do you think owns the press? Hello? A pretty simple and fair question if you think about it at face value. The news outlets, the TV channels, and their local affiliates, they're all part of greater corporations and owned by somebody, right? Asking who these owners are is a fair question in this situation, I think. Especially since Musk has been under attack by journalists for years. And of course, people and companies owning these media outlets will naturally lead to those outlets pushing their agendas. But a number of keyboard warriors on Twitter didn't take too kindly to this question. In fact, hundreds of Jewish reporters responded to Elon, saying he was hinting that it was the Jews who run the media. Which isn't necessarily what Musk was hinting at at all, but I guess these reporters were getting a little defensive. Probably because Jews are highly overrepresented in media companies. Just look at the employees or upper management at CNN if you don't believe me. Almost half their leadership is Jewish, which is a huge chunk considering they're such a small percentage of the population, at about 1.4% of America. That means maybe 2 out of 100 employees would be lighting the menorah if things were represented evenly. But instead we see over 50%, sometimes 70 or 80% of news and media outlets are either owned or run by them, the Jews. Not that there's anything wrong with that either. I mean, this isn't meant to be an anti-Jewish tirade at all. Just like how Musk's simple question wasn't meant to ruffle their kosher feathers either. But alas, you're not allowed to even mention this or hint at it. It's a true elephant in the room no one is supposed to talk about. And if you do, you get labeled a Nazi, which I'm sure someone will comment and call me a Nazi below this video. Just like how they're trying to slam Musk with this insult. And Musk wasn't even talking about them. But since he was opening up the floor for discussion about who owns the media and who sets the national topic of conversation, they apparently felt threatened. It's honestly the workings of a guilty mind if you think about it. That's why so many Jewish journalists sent him tweets saying stuff like, Nazi, when you hate Jews but you want someone else to say it. We control Mars too. Joke's on you. And one of my personal favorites, please stop trying to be Henry Ford. Of course referring to the legendary car maker's anti-Semitic tendencies. And this last tweet came from David Berkowitz. I wonder why he's worried about the Jews being outed as media dominating propagandists. You can really see the fear these people have. They're basically hearing accusations where no such accusation was really made. They're fearing they've been found out and that people are just toying with them, feeling like they're going to get caught any second now. They might say something like, oh my god, what do they know? How much do they know? Why is it so cold in here? It really does seem like these Jewish journalists know they're kind of guilty here, and they're terrified that a powerful, wealthy man can possibly usurp their power and get people talking about them in realistic terms. And honestly guys, I think it's kind of been working. But regardless of Jews acting scared and defensive when people like Musk and Trump turn their sights on the media and them, regardless of who exactly does own the media or not, there's still a bigger problem here. The media, news, online articles, TV channels, and anything mainstream media is corrupt, and basically foobar at this point. That's fucked up beyond all recognition. So it's great to see the media getting called out once again, because this greatly helps more people in the mainstream to wake up and recognize these harsh truths about the media. People know more truths now than ever, and although the red pills are hard to stomach, this is of course a good thing. Knowledge of the bias in the media is spreading at breakneck speed right now, and I think people like Elon Musk and President Trump are going to continue to be forces to be reckoned with over the next 15 years, which is really going to help this cause. The legacy media has really been blowing it lately in a lot of ways, but they use the news outlets they own to make us think they're still cool as cucumbers, when they're really not. CNN still pretends to be well liked and well respected, but no one in their right mind believes that bullshit anymore. People are waking up in the streets, at their homes, and in online places like message boards, Reddit, and parts of Twitter. And that's another reason why the media is so scary.
scared right now. They know the influence places like Pohl has had in recent years, and are the Donald, and they could see the influence of conservatism on young men. And as the media sits back and watches alt-right figures like Richard Spencer dominate news cycles, it really must irk them and get them worried too. And now, apparently, the media is overreacting to all this, which only makes it more obvious to anyone with an IQ over 100 that they're pretty damn guilty and corrupt. Once the truth has been accepted by enough people, we'll cross an actual bigger threshold, even further than we are today. And honestly, I think that may be part of the reason why these leftists have been importing so many third worlders, illegal immigrants, and also they've been publicizing black victimhood stuff. They want us to be distracted by the minorities first, so that we put off the left-wing problems in the media until later. It's a decent distraction tactic too, but I don't think it'll work anymore since we're all obviously catching on to them. What do you guys think about this Elon Musk story? Has he become the Donald Trump of Silicon Valley? And is that really a bad comparison like the original author meant? Because I think it sounds pretty badass to me. Taking on the media, shitting on assholes on Twitter, kicking ass and taking names? That's the kind of leaders we need in America, if you ask me. Comment your thoughts on everything below, and thanks for watching No Bullshit. See y'all next time.